Hi, it's Matt Simmons with Curbside Laundries. Just want to thank everybody for attending. And um, yeah, really excited about today's uh, webinar about how to get commercial accounts and a whole bunch more all related. But yeah, my name is Matt Simmons with uh, Curbside Laundries. My, that's me on the right. Uh, my brother, Aaron Simmons, is on the left right there. That's in front of our family laundromat, Super Suds. Uh, we're based out of Long Beach, California. Uh, and, um, and we just grew our business exponentially. Just want to share a lot of the stuff we that helped us grow and, and we collected a lot of commercial accounts along the way and we're going to be sharing all that information and yeah, there's a lot to it. So right over here, just want to thank Sudsies for their generous sponsorship and uh, we've actually referred over a ton of uh, clients over to them because people from all over the country visited Super Suds, our, la our laundromat, and they asked, hey, where do you get your you know plastic bags from for the wash and fold or where do you get your vending supplies or carts, all that stuff. And um, and they're also very kind. They gave us a 5% off to, if you mention curbside, off your first order. I tried getting 10, but their prices are razor thin. Their margins are razor thin. Their prices are really, really good. Um, but yeah, they're a great company to work with, um, family owned, great people. Um, okay, so over here, um, this is, um, just wanna encourage everybody to get connected. This is how we all kind of learn together. And I just wanna ask a poll, gonna have a poll right over here. That asks, do you own a laundromat? And you'll see the reason for this. I'm just going to go ahead and launch that poll. So, yeah, on your screen, go ahead and click. Uh, yes, I have a laundromat or I have more than one laundromat. I don't have a laundromat yet or I am currently an escrow on a laundromat. So this is, yeah, super helpful uh, because then it will let us know who we're talking to. And we could kind of cater it that way as well. We're also getting a lot of... Um, um, interest with with um, brand new or people looking at the business as well. So that's, yeah, that's interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and close that poll and I'll share the results. So over half the, actually about 80% of the people on the line are laundry owners. So that's fantastic. So the questions you're going to get are real questions, you know, just, um, and we've got about 350 people registered for the webinar. It's going to be a full, it's going to be uh, maxed out. So um, if you weren't able to get a seat, we'll email people. Yeah, yeah we're over capacity. We'll email a, a, a video to the people who weren't able to get in. Um, so in any case, 80% have a laundromat. 14% are looking to get into it. 6% are looking to get in. So that's a great crowd. Um, and so one thing, whether you're a seasoned veteran or brand new or just exploring, I highly recommend uh, Facebook is where it's at, where a lot of laundry owners are able to get together. So you no longer have to wait once or twice a year to have a get together in your vicinity. You're able to get together every day or any minute you want to. It's really amazing. And so I would go over to Facebook, type in laundry owners. And these are a couple of groups that I really like. Um, laundry owners right there. That's run by Ross Dodd. I used to be on the CLA board with him and a uh, great guy. And he's the admin for them. And Laundry Owner Showcase is another fantastic group. This is an old screenshot. They have now over a thousand members, so they had a big celebration. And these are communities. Everybody's helping each other out. And we also have the Curbside Laundries page, so feel free to like that. That's kind of a, a shameless plug right there for ourselves. But um, then on the bottom left, American Coin Off and Planet Laundry on the right. Those are industry magazines and those kind of help us bond together because we'll read these articles and we'll have conversations about them you know you'll see those conversations carried online and it's just a really neat uh, way we're all benefiting and we're all growing uh, the, the, the business you know we're all becoming better operators because we're sharing knowledge and you'll see a big difference between um, laundry owners who are connected versus the people who are just collecting their quarters and that's all they do but we're trying to make things better so that's um, pretty exciting stuff so this is a little bit about us this is Super Suds right over here. Um, that's our family laundromat. It's about 8,000 square feet. Um, and we've been in business since the 1990s. So you could see that on the bottom, that's our wash and fold revenue. And for the longest time, we were between six and $8,000 a month. And then my brother came into the picture around 2010, started realizing the importance of being online and doing and working on your online presence. And we and you could see now we're doing actually this is outdated we're now doing over sixty thousand dollars a month in wash and fold twenty thousand dollars of which is um, commercial accounts which is what we're going to be talking about today so one of the keys one of the ways we're able to grow our business was online presence that is the key and because your customer acquisition cost is really low somebody looks online for wash and fold you're not convincing them to do a wash and fold they're already looking for it and they're either going to find you or the competition so that if you take one thing away from today I want everybody to kind of look at their own online presence, see how they're doing, 
uh, because it's really like winners take all. The top three search rankings get the majority of all the business out there. Um, okay, so the other uh, item was we grew the business so much, we needed software to run it. And that's where curbside laundries came about. Um, we looked all over the place for software that was made just for wash and fold. And it was either dry cleaning software where we were like an add-on. There was just simple software to accept credit cards, but it didn't manage the wash and fold process or solve all the unique problems to us. And then the other item was um, there, there was software that's made for the restaurant industry, um, but that didn't really solve our problems because restaurant software wants you to it's like one point in time, you buy your hamburger and and then you pay for it and the transaction's over. And as you know, with Wash and Fold, they may pay before or after, they might want to pick up, you still, even after the transaction, you still have to do the close. So we needed something to manage the process. So we were at the point where we either needed to, we needed to build something because it just didn't exist. So that's where Curbside Laundries came about. So I'm just going to be talking a little bit about Curbside Laundries and then we'll dive right into commercial accounts because yeah I know that's why you're you're here for. Um, so we started curbside laundries. Um, you know, so we provide three different things. In store point of sale terminal, um, so you could handle your walk in business, pick up and delivery solution, and then also a laundromat website. And it's not just any laundromat website. I'll go more into detail on, on that in uh, just a little bit. The or the website we make is just phenomenal. So yeah I'll get into detail on that. Um, and then the, the pickup and delivery is where we've seen our revenues grow significantly year after year after year. So if you're not doing pickup and delivery, you may want to look into that. I, you could schedule an online demo afterwards because, yeah, we're, that's for another time. Um, but that is where the fastest growing segment of this market is, is on pickup and delivery, just consumer behavior is changing. And then as soon as we added a button to our website that says schedule a pickup, our pickup and delivery business went up 30%. And that's because people don't want to call in and talk to somebody. They just want to use their phones and tap schedule. So, all right. Um, two little things about our software. We just released a multi-location module. This might be the most understated slide of the whole deck um, because this is a really big piece. So if you have more than one store, which is about a quarter of you on the line, um, this allows you from your phone to check in to any one of your stores. So you could see how store A or B or C or D is doing. And you could see... Um, how the productivity of each employee, which order was, uh, which machines were used on any given order, uh, you could see everything. Um, the number of orders coming in, employee performance, you name it, and the revenue, and you just could switch between store to store from your phone to look up any order. It's pretty cool. Um, then over here, we just released a zip code management tool. This is for pickup and delivery. So if you want to service the different neighbor, different neighborhoods, you just add a zip code and boom, you're now in business and you're servicing that neighborhood and uh, could accept orders through the online application. All right, so now we're getting started on commercial accounts. All right, so one question is, is how many commercial accounts do you have? And I'm gonna ask a poll. I actually already asked it during the registration, but I want everybody to be able to see this firsthand because it's very important um, and it'll give a lot of context to everything. So go ahead and uh, answer that question. If you have zero or one through five, be honest, you know, this is, um, you know, it's, it's anonymous. So, um, and I think this will be very enlightening. One thing to keep in mind while you're filling that out, it turns out if you don't have a strong online presence for your laundromat, so I've actually talked to over a thousand laundry owners. I'm in a very unique position. It's pretty awesome because, and, and so almost across the board, if somebody doesn't have a strong online presence, um, they're going to be making between $500 and $2,500 a month in wash and fold. And the reason for that is because people can't find them. People are not, you know, if you if you just have a sign that says, do your wash and fold here, um, your walk-in business, it's a different market. It's a different demographic. They're used to paying pennies per pound, and wash and fold is dollars per pound. So if you're... Um, so, so, so the real the way to get these accounts, wash and fold, is the online presence, and it goes with commercial, obviously too, because these commercial accounts they're not driving through downtown wherever um, to find your laundromat, and they're not going to walk into your laundromat and just say, "Hey, could I bring my business's laundry here?" No, they, these guys are keyboard warriors. So even more, if you want to get these commercial accounts, 
it all comes back to online. And there's some other ways to get in, we'll go over it, but the lowest cost to acquisition or lowest customer cost of, lowest acquisition cost per customer is gonna be through your online presence. So right over here, you're gonna see, see the commercial accounts, it's um, about half the people right over here, um, you can see have zero uh, commercial accounts, 34 have one through five, and only a small percentage have a significant amount, okay, about a quarter. Um, and only one out of 10 have 11 or more. So one way of stopping a conversation, you know, laundry owners love to talk, but if you want to get laundry owners to stop talking, you ask them, how do you get your commercial accounts? So I'll go more into detail on that. Um, so let's, and this is the reason why. So this is directly from at our laundromat superset. So I just ran a quick report. And our software automatically creates the invoices for the commercial accounts and automatically sends them out, automatically, you know, bills them once a week or after each order or once a month or every week or every two weeks, you name it. It basically does the job for you. And, it, and each customer can have a different price per pound or different rate. And it automatically does that automatically. Where in the old days, or most laundromats, what they're doing, they got an Excel spreadsheet and they got all their commercial accounts listed there. And they're manually creating these invoices. Our manager used to spend eight hours a day every Saturday doing these invoices and is prone to mistakes. So now this is all automated. The reason why I'm showing you this is you could see uh, right over here, this is uh, this pet place is bi-weekly. They're spending about $1,700 a month. So what is that? That's about $20,000 a year. And you could see, we just talked about only 23% of you have like six or more of these commercial accounts. So if somebody is bringing in $20,000 a year, you don't even want to tell them what industry you're targeting. You're not going to tell anybody nothing because if somebody, you know, starts pawning these off from you because there, and there are not that many of these, you know, this is a limited market. So when they're looking for wash and fold, you want them to find you, not your competition. And if somebody pawns one off, there goes 20 grand a year. And, and, you know, even the small one down here, this is weekly, that's 250 bucks a month. And, or no, that's 250 bucks a week. So a thousand bucks a month, that's 12,000 a year. So these are super, super valuable accounts. Everybody loves commercial accounts. The hard part is getting them. And that's one of the things we'll, we'll be talking about here. All right, so this comes down to order sizes. And I'm gonna ask a question, and this is basically if somebody walks into your laundromat and then it's residential, on average, they're gonna give you 23 pounds of clothes. We charge a buck 65. So that basically means when they give you 23 pounds of clothes, we're going to make about 37 bucks, gross. Now, if it's commercial, they give you over twice as much clothes. They're giving you 49 pounds. And that's a lot. You know, that's two 25-pound weights. You know, that's – and so they're not going to carry it all at one time. They're going to – so we actually have some flatbed carts that you, you see at, like, Costco where we wheel it out. They put their clothes on it. or And so we want to be as – so you've got to think about it. if you're tracking these commercial accounts, you've got to cater to them and make it easy for them to bring the clothes in because, yeah, they're just going to give you more clothes. One question I'm going to ask, we're going to do the final poll for today, is do you offer pickup and delivery? So question, answer one is I'm currently offering pickup and delivery. I plan on offering it soon or I'm not doing pickup and delivery. Yeah, so go ahead and answer that. And then that's very relevant to the next slide. So, yeah, I'll show you why. All right, so it looks like the answers are pouring in. Gonna go ahead and close the poll. So if you haven't clicked one, go ahead and click one. Yeah, still, yeah we've got a lot of people on the line. Yeah, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share it, just keep things moving along. And 37% of you, so one third, are doing pickup and delivery. Another 30% are planning on doing it soon. And, 30, and another third are not doing it. These numbers have changed a lot over the last two years. Two years ago, it, it would just be about be like a fraction of this, you know, doing pickup and delivery. I'm, we're getting more and more phone calls. Like, in fact, I just got one this morning um, from people who don't even have laundromats who just want to go straight to pickup and delivery. And, and so you have a big advantage right now. You have a laundromat. Your search ranking is going to be way better just naturally because you have a physical presence for your laundromat. And so you should be able to, to if, if you start now, you'll be able to rank way better. If somebody starts without a laundromat, they do have an uphill battle, but many of them will be successful, and over time, they will get that search ranking, even without that physical location. It, it does take about, 
between a year to two years, but it, time passes. So meanwhile, if you're thinking about doing it, I would do it soon just to get some domain authority, meaning is Google going to refer you to people looking for pickup and delivery? Now, here's how it relates to commercial. Now, a residential pickup and delivery customer will give you about 42 pounds of clothes. So about twice is when they bring it into your laundromat. Now, this is the holy grail right here. If they are both pickup and delivery and commercial, they're going to give you 161 pounds on average. Okay, so we do over 1,000. This is based on super suds, but we do. It, we found it to be very representative across the country. Um, so 161 pounds at a buck 65. That's 265 dollars per order. And another beautiful part, the most expensive part about pickup and delivery is pickup and delivery, paying your driver. So if your driver is able to pick up one order from one location of 161 pounds, that is money. <laughs> so um, that's a great thing to, to go over. Um, so, um, so yeah, I just realized I wasn't showing that slide. So here you go. Um, so you could see the 161 pounds and the $265 um, for pickup and delivery on commercial. And so if you're, so it goes hand in hand. Um, commercial, you could do it by itself without pickup and delivery, but if you do it with pickup and delivery, you'll make a whole bunch more money. All right. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind is commercial accounts are not your bread and butter. Okay, they take time to acquire, and you don't want to focus your entire business on going after commercial accounts. You could go broke waiting for them to come in because, you know, they come in, at a certain rate, and it's and the easy low-hanging fruit is the residential. Um, but these are the way I see it. The commercial accounts are the cherry on top. They're very profitable, and they're great to add to your existing business. For the longest time, commercial accounts were about 25% of our business. Now it's closer to one third, just because we're doing a little bit more focus on them. Um, this is important slide: rate of customer acquisition. This basically means how easy is it to get these different types of customers. So this could affect your business plan. Number one, the easiest customers to get is your or are your is your self serve. So these are just people who come into your laundromat and do laundry, and just by putting up a sign in front of your laundromat, that gets them. The next easiest, uh, it, well, there's other things you could do too, but you get the idea. Um, the rate of customer acquisition. Um, number two is wash and fold. So wash and fold is the next easy. You know, you're going to have people asking, hey, could you do the clothes for me? Um, and then if you just get a website and you do a good job on the website, you'll bring in people that way. Third one is pickup and delivery. And then last is what we're talking about now, which is commercial, but also commercial pays the most. So you see that sort of relationship. The, uh, the harder it is, the more it pays off. Okay, so how do you get commercial accounts? So right over here, we've got three different ways. And there's people successful in all these three different ways, but not everybody. So number one is 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 calling telemarketing calling up these different people and and saying hey we do wash and fold we hired a tel telemarketer at super Suds and it did not work for us it just it was um it, we just lost a lot of money and it didn't work another one is door knocking and i like this one it says let me show let me show our new product and and again this is called interruptive marketing meaning they're going about their business and then suddenly you're bothering them and saying, hey, um, let me show you what we got to, to, to sell. And they're like, uh, please go away. You know, their guards are up. So it's kind of best not to, that's not the best selling environment, but it works for some people. And then another one is direct mail. And, and so that's, you know, you could spend a lot of money on postage. And, but, you know, it does work for some people. I've actually talked to, I've only talked to three laundry owners who've had a significant number of commercial accounts and when they did not have a strong web presence. And, and so that's, and so one of the guys I said, how do you do that? And, you know, I, you're the first person I've talked to. And, and he said, I earned them. So I think he was the door knocking and, and telemarketing guy, but, um, and it worked for him, you know, he's done well, but he, you know, his customer acquisition cost is pretty high. That's his own time. Um, there's another person who does the direct mail and he kind of just feeds the piper every once in a while, you know, like as he's making money, he's, sending out postcards to the right target industries. Um, and so that's, so that's another avenue. But again, that's expensive and it takes a lot of time and most of those letters just get thrown in the trash. So here's how you get commercial accounts. It's through the website. I've kind of alluded to this in the past. 
and I'm just going to go in and show you. So think about it for yourself. When is the last time you went into a restaurant without doing an online search or looking at the Yelp review? Or when's the last time you bought something? Like so people are using their phones, and they before the part of the buying process today is not walking to the laundromat and saying, "Is this where I want to go?" It, the people are looking online and looking at reviews and things like that, and and seeing your online presence. So I'm bringing in this is an incognito Google. Um, and I recommend everybody does this for themselves. So all you have to do is you right click on your icon right over here, and then you choose new incognito window. That way, it makes sure that the search results are not biased. Um, and so I'm going to just do a couple searches. Um, for example, if you do uh, wash and fold Long Beach, because we're in Long Beach, you could see, and I would skip these ads. Because the ads, we basically paid two or three bucks to be listed there. If somebody clicks on it, it costs us two or three bucks. And don't click on your competition. It's not a good thing to do. Um, so the, the other thing is, so the first two search results are super suds. And this part is so important. This is why we are just dominating in, in our area, is because anybody looking for wash and fold finds us. And we even beat out Yelp, which is really hard to do. Um, and and so how and the first search result gets triple the amount of traffic as rank number three, and the second search result gets double as rank number three, and 95% of people skip the ads. So so we created the mousetrap, and this is so what we did is we hired a company that's an experts at websites, and they um, the, and and most mom and pop laundromats are not doing this company like if you went to them directly it'd be about thirty thousand dollars and what what does a thirty thousand dollar website look like or what's the difference great question what we did is we basically paid a team of ex seo experts eighty to a hundred dollars an hour or between and and they for two weeks they researched what brings laundromat and laundry pickup and commercial laundry websites to the front page of google and then after two weeks of paying a gazillion dollars for that then we then they started developing the website. And so what we do for our clients who are getting the website through us is they basically pay two thousand dollars, not thirty thousand. So they pay two thousand and then they have a one on one meeting with Marathon Consulting or with the, this team of experts and 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 they they ask a lot of questions like what commercial opportunities are nearby you and what um you know what demographics are nearby and what cities and, and so everything is customized and localized. And then they do research to find out what keyword opportunities there are in your vicinity that you could really cash in on. Um, so, for example, if I did Wash and Fold, Virginia, so the entire state of Virginia, um, you'll see this is one of our clients, Laundry Place VA. So Yelp beat them out, but this is for an entire state of 8 million people. Um, and, I, and then I could even do a Commercial Laundry, Staten Island, so everybody knows that New York is the most competitive area for wash and fold and pick up and delivery. And you'll see Staten Island, that's our client right there using a website design that we built. And they got the first two search re results. I could even do laundry services, uh, California. So if anybody in California is looking for laundry services, um, you'll, so rinse.com, that's like a national company. Uh, but you'll see super suds, that's us. Um, you'll see Oceana, that's one of our clients. You'll see Superior Laundry, you know, that's again somebody using our software and uh, website is designed by the same people. So we, anyways, a lot of people are going to promise you, oh, we make a really good website or my website's just fine. But the proof is you do a right click, new incognito search, look for laundry services, commercial laundry, and we'll go over different keywords to, to do. Um, and, and laundry pickup is the big one, and pickup and delivery, all those things, and you want to see how you rank. And, and you know, if you don't have much competition, you might already be number one. But otherwise, this is where the winners take all, because nobody's going to page two of Google. All right, so that's enough of the website. But that's where people find you, so I had to kind of cover that. Um, another thing, I talked to this one guy in Connecticut just yesterday, and he, a uh, great guy, and he's, he's um, his man, I, I might have given too much information. Um, so, so in any case, his website is not ranking, and and he's paying an SEO team of experts to get him to the you know front page. He's not listed. So I just want to warn people: there are a lot of SEO experts that want to take monthly money from you, 
and and if you're not the, the center node of your entire marketing online presence is your website that's the most important part so you could pay a lot of people to like oh I'll help you on Yelp and I'll help you here and I'll help you there and but if your website needs improvement it's kind of putting lipstick on it so save your money on lipstick and you got to focus on the website um, there's other things you could do on top of the website. We could go over that later. Anyways, I'm kind of running behind, but there's a lot of content there um, that I'd be happy to talk more one on one because it's so important. That's how you get customers. Okay, right over here. This is industries. These are the industries to go after. And I know a lot of a lot of people are hitting print screen right now. I in the right hand side of that toolbar, I made it so this is a downloadable um, thing, like a downloadable handout. Um, so in any case, these are different and I. I caught up six different folks who have 11 or more commercial accounts, and I got zero phone calls back. And and I totally understand because this stuff is this information that you're looking at right here is just so valuable. And you know nobody wants to share this. <laughs> so I mean, people are sharing a lot of other information, but commercial, given this fact that one account could be 20 grand a year, you don't want to run into you know competition. Um, so anyways, these each one of these could actually be broken down into different categories too, like medical, it, that could be clinics, it could be urgent care, it could be physician groups. Keep in mind, you don't want to be dealing with bodily fluids or procedural stuff, but they still have a lot of laundry that we could do, and you don't have to be specially certified for that type of stuff. Um, the rehab centers, you know, that is not, you know, I know we're in Long Beach, but that's not drug rehab, that is more of the physical therapy rehab, so they have a lot of laundry there camps if you have camps nearby or schools so schools might just be one category here in fact I don't even think I have them here but schools but they could have sports teams they could have cheer team they could have a whole bunch of teams and so you could get in with the school and there's a whole bunch of stuff there okay we got high schools and preschools right over here and daycare cruises you know that's more than just cruises it could be a boat it could be a harbor it could be a whole bunch of stuff and and so and there's different techniques as far as so that these so now you know what industries to target, um, and the spas are another good one, salons, you know, anybody who uses towels. One thing just want to kind of focus on, and I'm jumping all over the place, but hotels and motels, you do not want to go after the ones with more than 20 beds. Save your time, because they're going to be better serviced with a company like Sintas, who does high volume, and, and to us, we, we had the most success with 20 beds or less. Um, so there's a you know, I, I, and you could design your website to go after these different groups. Uh, but then again, if you have a good website that's already ranking for the commonly used search terms, that's going to work out really well, like wash and fold and laundry services. But you could do it even better if you really drill down and focus on these. Okay, so these are some local opportunities. This is an example of a laundromat, Chloe's Laundromat. Uh, this was actually found by Lawrence Cohen. This was from that Facebook group, a Laundry Owner Showcase. So, and Lawrence Cohen, he is a writer for uh, American Coin Op, and he does a yeah, great monthly column and just very passionate about the laundry business and the la and laundromats. And so this is something that you don't think, a ra random person who sees the U.S. Coast Guard does not say, oh, that's a potential customer, or they got, they got to do their laundry somewhere. And they're going to have special needs. They're going to have to have that laundry done real quickly. They might want port side pickup. They might want, uh, you know, there's a lot, and they're, a lot of times they're placing the order while they're still at sea because they want, um, you know, because they know they're going to be coming into town. And so another local opportunity for us was uh, we had, we're doing a play called Chill, their ice skating show for three months, and we're doing their heavy ice skating jackets. And so that was a lot of money. That's every single day. And, and then we had a refinery that gave us 600 pounds a day out of bucks. We were charging a buck 50 back then, but that was $900 a day from one account for 45 days and we threw our, our employees a big party, you know, once that was done, but we, you know, you can make a ton of money. So you got to look for local opportunities. Okay. So this is focusing on keywords. So let's pretend the industry we're going after is restaurants. So you don't just want to say, Hey, we do wash and fold for restaurants because uh, you got to think in terms of what is the customer thinking about? What are they looking on? They're going to ask Google a question. So they're going to ask, um, oh, I need, where do I get my napkins or tablecloths done? And, and, where, and where do I get my towels done? And so those are the garments that they're using. So you kind of want to focus on both the industry and then also 
mention the garments as well. And we've got a special structure on our website as well that does the headings and the back, a lot of back end stuff, so it ranks really well. But this gives you a general idea of like different keywords and terms to use. Um, also wanted to kind of show you uh, an example. Well, actually, I'll show you the example in just a second. One thing to keep in mind is you may not want to go after restaurants because food stains and oils and people kissing their napkins with lipstick, that's all hard stuff to get off. So we actually avoid restaurants. But I just wanted to demonstrate how you would go after restaurants or any industry. You got to also not just choose the, the industry, but what garments are getting done. Another strategy for coming up with keywords is you figure out the garment that you want to do. And you might get really good at a specific type of garment. So let's say towels. Those are easy to fold, right? So there are a whole bunch of different types of towels. Kitchen towels, gym towels, massage towels. I'd read them all, but I'm running a long time. Um, so let me go ahead and give you an example. If somebody types in towel service, Long Beach, and there's a lot of Long Beaches. I'm not even typing California. It could be Long Beach, New York. Um, or Long Beach, Florida. So again, I'd skip the ads. These guys are paying a lot of money, three bucks per click for if I were to click on them. But then I scroll down, what are the first search results? Super suds, super suds. So it pays and we do a whole bunch of towels, <laughs> go figure. We even beat out towelservice.com, which is amazing because all they do is towels. <laughs> and then Sintas. Sintas has a lot of money and we outrank them and you could bet that's a national company with a gazillion dollars and, and we're, we've got a better website that's ranking better than them. So if you do like a search for rent a car near Los Angeles airport, you're going to see all these companies are basically jockeying for position. You got enterprise and kayak and car rentals.com. And you could bet budget is like, oh, we got to crack the top three and they're going to spend a million dollars to do that. And, and so that's kind of what we're helping mom and pop laundromats do is, is just get ranked really, really well. Um, you know, we can't guarantee the results, but it's basically the same type of website we have made by the same people, and we've been successful with a lot of people. Um, okay, so now we've got the different keywords, um, and, and I focus on the garments and different types, and then that way if somebody searches online, hey, where do I get my towels done, you show up. Okay, this is really important. It is getting more and more competitive online. And because it's not a secret anymore, you have to be online for customers to find you. Two years ago at the clean show, when people were coming to our booth, people didn't, half the people didn't even have a website. Now everybody does. But now they're like, well, now I realize my website's not as good as I'd like it to be. And even after just two years of having their website, they're looking to upgrade. Um, and then even, so one thing is regarding the blog, this is, what that basically means is you write a blog post, like one paragraph, you share a picture, and the blog could be about anything laundry related. And I highly recommend doing a blog on your website. Um, the reason I've got a picture of a coyote here is because I ran for city council, I mean, this is like 10 years ago in Signal Hill, and I had a website, and I saw a coyote, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a blog post about what you do if you see a coyote, who to call. And for the next 10 years, <clears throat> I, you know, I get all these people um, just randomly looking who say who did a search in Google looking for Coyote or Signal Hill or just uh, and and my web page got the top domain authority, which means everybody looking types in Coyote and Signal Hill found me, and so I got tons of traffic because of this one ridiculous uh, blog post. <laughs> so you could do the same thing if you blog like once or twice a month about. <clears throat> laundering stuff, or if you're going after the commercial accounts, we already went over the, the keywords and the, the strategies and what keywords to use and what industries, and you're popping in those different keywords and giving it context and you're including photos because photos help it rank better, you're going to outdo a lot of your competition because they're probably not doing that. So again, you know, and I'd only do a blog if you're able to update it at least once a month. You know, you don't want a blog where it says last time it was updated was February 2018. So that just looks like it's decaying. So I, you want to keep it active. Um, but this is a fantastic way. Google loves blogs. Google loves fresh content. Google loves original content. Speaking of original content, never, ever do a copy and paste website. You know, you might be able to get a free, cheap, you know, website for 500 bucks. But if it's copy and paste and they plagiarize or you're getting basically the same website as somebody else with the same verbiage, it's garbage. It, it basically, it's going to hurt your search ranking. So never plagiarize, and then also make sure your website is unique. Um, okay, call to action. This part's really important. 
So this is how once people are at your website, you got them to the website, what happens then? How do they turn that web traffic into an order? Okay, so I put in red boxes all the different calls to action on the page, some better than others. The best call to action we have on our page that makes us the most money is this button that says schedule pickup. Um, as I mentioned before, once we had that, our pickup and delivery business went up 30%, and I love it when commercial accounts click schedule pickup. The reason being is they don't negotiate the price down. If they talk to you, the only thing you could do is give them a better price. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes you do want to talk to them because you're working out special arrangements and all that stuff, but if they schedule a pickup on their own, that's beautiful. You're making retail price, and that's wonderful. Um, the other thing, do you have a phone number? Is it your laundromat's web phone number listed? So I got a quick story on that. We, uh, a motel, actually is an owner of six motels nearby, and their washing machines, their, where they did their laundry, broke down. And so we're going to be doing all the, you know, linens and garments and sheets and everything for this hotel for a long time, for I think it's like three weeks, for six hotel, motels, and it's going to be a lot of money. Our attendant said, go ahead and email the owner. Here's the email address. We're sitting waiting by our email, and no email came through. So if, if you have your laundromat's phone number, you need to train your team what to do when somebody's calling for a quote or, or a request. And they need to get, I, this is obvious, but you, they need to get the other person's phone number. They can't rely on them reaching out and calling the owner or so forth. So you got to train your employees well. Um, another thing, we got the contact us. And I'm going to... Quickly, I found this on, on Reddit on some marketing group, and and this is a really cool slide. Like, if you're watching on YouTube, you may just want to screenshot this. Um, this got leaked. This is from Amazon, and it basically says how to write a really good email. And the the part that's relevant here is enter a compelling call to action. Do not write click here. So going back, um, there's something we could improve with our website, which is instead of saying contact us right over here. How about something exciting like get a custom quote, quantity discounts available, uh, free pickups, you know, or something to the effect, something where they're getting something. And so contact us, what does that mean versus get a custom quote and letting them know that quantity discounts are available. So you want to really pay attention, one, getting people to your website, and two, what are the different calls to action and you make sure that those pathways are smooth. All right. So over here we've got we are in the low volume, high margin business. Now, low volume doesn't mean it's not a lot of laundry. It's still a lot of laundry. Okay. So what it means is we're not in the high volume. We're not doing 100 bed hotels. And even if you get a 100 bed hotel, you're probably going to lose it because they're going to find out census could do it for 45 cents a pound and you can't because they got different equipment. And so you're going to lose that as soon as they shop around. So it's best for long-term growth. Focus, stay within our niche. We're in the low volume, high margin. So I love being in. That's the best in any business. That's the best group to be in. Because if you're in high volume, low margin, it's you're making pennies on every order. And then you could overstaff, you lose money. You understaff, you don't meet, you, you can't keep up. And so you're constantly having issues. High volume, I'm sorry, low volume, high margin means you're making some money. And, and so that's where you want to be. One thing to uh, keep in mind is a lot of, you took a big risk opening up your laundromat, all right? Yeah, and and there, there's no safety guarantee. So my personal feeling is whoever takes the risk should get the reward. That's why you took the, re the risk. And you got to remember that. Um, you know, we've had different laundry owners hire, or not hire, but hey, you could set up wash and fold here for free. And, and you know, just feed the machines. And so somebody is able to make a ton of money at your laundromat and they didn't, and they took zero risk. So I think you should keep, you know, make as much money as you can. <clears throat> um, the other thing is with a high volume, low margin, there's companies, and I don't want to mention rents.com by name or different companies, but though, um, but basically you want to, they're going to, there are different companies out there who will give you who will give you as much clothes as you could take and they're going to get pay you 85 cents a pound or, or less or something around there and or they might take 15% of your gross revenue or something equally gross and 
and they're going to um, have you do all the work. And 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 so this is basically you're the one who spent a half million dollars on machines. You're the one who has the lease or the mortgage under your name. And so you took this big risk to create this opportunity. So if you're building up another business. And that's what you're doing. If you're doing somebody at another wash and fold company's laundry, um, you're basically feeding them. You're building up your competition, and you're the one who laid out a million dollars. Okay, so so that just seems like bad business choice. So I, I just highly recommend grow your own business, and you can. You it, it comes down to getting your own customers, and we could help you on that. But but whoever and the other reason not to do it for the other is if somebody. Is taking 15 or 25 percent of your gross revenue. You got to ask who does the customer belong to? Does it belong to you or does it belong to them? And if it belongs to them, you are shortchanging yourself because if you ever go to sell your laundromat and you say, "Oh, we got this thriving pickup and delivery business," and they go, "Oh, are those your customers?" The answer is going to be no. And they're like, "Oh, that's kind of risky. What if they took all that business and sent it to somewhere else?" And they could, and they can. So even for resale value, you could lose hundreds of thousands of dollars if you build your business around there. So let's focus on ourselves and, and low volume, high margin, and grow your business. Focus on your business, not somebody else's. Okay, contracts. Now, a lot of people ask, how do you create uh, laundromat contracts? And i got to speed up. we got nine more slides. Um, the, so with the contracts, we, the way we do it is we just avoid contracts. Um, I see contracts as a way of, with Sintas and all these other companies, they got these crazy contracts. People have to read through them. And with us, we just say, this is the price per pound, and, and we could start tomorrow. So, so we make it very easy for these commercial accounts to do business with us. They don't, they're not tied into a year, and that's a big selling point. It helps us bring in new, new business. So we're not against contracts, but we find it's actually a selling tool if you don't use them. If you do use contracts, don't call them a contract, call them an agreement. Everybody's been trained at a young age not to sign a contract, but we could okay an agreement. So that's uh, one technique to get that okayed. And again, you don't say sign the contract, you say, hey, can you okay the agreement? Because um, everybody's okay with okaying. All right, over here, price per pound or by the item. Uh, that's a real laundry order, pick up and delivery. Granted, it's residential on the left uh, for pick, yeah, pick up and delivery. And then on the, and that's price per pound. And then on the right, is price per item. Now, a lot of businesses don't want to do a price per pound because they don't know what a price, they don't know what a pound of laundry looks like. One way to overcome that objection is, hey, let's just do a trial run. We'll see how much it costs, and then we'll see, you know, if you want it. And so you could do a trial run with these guys, and that way, and the benefit to them is that way we could give you the most accurate pricing possible. And and that also overcomes the, the thing where they say, oh, we're going to give you 2,000 pounds a week, and it turns out to be 400, um, which would still be great, but then you gave them the 2,000 pound price. Um, so you avoid that when you do that trial run as well. Um, the, so if you have to do a price per item, it is a little bit more challenging in terms of, um, it is a little bit more challenging in terms of figuring out how much to charge, and it's harder on your employees because they're like, oh, for this customer, do it this way. And they might give you one price for short sleeves, and then they wind up giving you long sleeves. So you're just a lot safer doing it by the pound. That being said, it might help you figure out how much those garments weigh and charge them by the item because that could help you get new customers. Um, so the benefit of price per item is it makes it easier to acquire customers. Um, the benefit of price per pound, it just makes logistics and billing and all that stuff a lot easier. All right, so here's our pricing. And the part that's not relevant is our pricing. Okay, so don't copy that. This is regional, and you know, New York, it could be like 99 cents, and you know, we're about a buck 65 where we're at. Um, the reason I'm showing this slide is so you could see the comparison, because a lot of people say, well, how much do you charge commercial? What should I charge the commercial? And our feeling, you know, look, the work that we're doing is labor intensive, and only, and we want to make a high margin on every order. We don't just want to just go into the high volume, low margin business. So even for a commercial, we just give them a 10 cent discount and that's provided they're giving us a lot of clothes. Um, so we're basically about a buck 65. If they call for a quote, it'll be between a buck 55 and a buck 65. We do have a couple exceptions with some high volume clients that give us a, a lot of clothes per, you know, every week. And so we gave them a special deal of a buck 45, but that is very, very rare. 
Um, another way to sell the buck fifty five, and the, you know, some commercial clients will push back. They're like, "What? I'm only saving ten cents a pound." And one way we overcome that objection is like, "Hey, soon we're going to be raising our price to a buck seventy five for our residential customers. We'll keep you locked in at a buck fifty five, so you'll be saving twenty cents a pound." And they go, "Okay, cool." Um, we do have one client that's paying a buck fifteen. That's a homeless shelter. That's our good deed for the week. So that's just kind of special exception, not really to make money, but just um, to help cover our costs. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is your presentation. What does your finished product look like and what do the tickets look like? One thing you don't want to put on your ticket is how much it is because you might have one payer over here and you might have the, a different person receiving the service and you don't want the people receiving the service knowing you know it's not none of their business. They're not paying, paying for it, somebody else is. So you notice on our tickets, our ticket is on the right-hand side, it has the preferences listed out. So again, that's printed from our software, but whatever you use, I think it is a good idea to say what the preferences are so that, so they know you did the you you watched the clothes the way that they asked for it. Versus on the left, you know, that's just a mess. Like is it 41 pounds? Is it 39 pounds? Like as soon as you have something crossed out, the customer is going to question like, how much does it really weigh? Another thing that's super important to do on this, and I'm sure you're doing this already, um, is how many packages. So even on the handwritten ticket, people learn you got to write four packages because the very common mistake is you only give them back one or two of the bags and then they get home or you, you deliver the clothes and then they're like, hey, I'm missing half my clothes. And, and they're going to think you lost their clothes. You don't want them thinking that. And then they're going to get equally as mad when they have to go back to the laundromat to get their, their re remaining. They paid money to save time, not to spend more time. So you want your tickets to look professional. And you want the billing stuff, the dollar amount stuff, to go somewhere else. So speaking of going somewhere else, the, our software automatically creates invoices that look like this. They got your logo, they got the price per pound, and it knows that this customer pays a buck fifty, not a buck sixty-five. And so it automatically, so our attendant only has to weigh the clothes, and the software does everything else, and plugs in the right price, does the right amount, and and automatically creates the invoice. It automatically emails it out, and very 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 soon. Um, the customer will get emailed a link so they could click on the link and make a payment online. So we won't have to be in the bill collection b business anymore. Our software is going to be doing it all for us. And so, but already it saves a lot of time by r doing these invoices and without making mistakes. So that is super, super convenient. Another thing with your invoices is you need to be able to group it up by location. So for example, if you're doing a, a, a school with three different Low, you know, elementary school here, high school here, they're going to want to know how much each location spent and they want it all on one invoice. So, of course, we build our software so it does it that way. But if whatever invoicing system you're using, you need to be able to group up how much they're spending per location um, because they're going to want to know. Another big one is Airbnb. Uh, we have a client who called us up out, out of the blue and they said, hey, oh, we just got a, uh, just want to thank you. We just got an Airbnb management company signed up with us. They have over 100 Airbnbs that they manage. And so they, when they do the invoices, our software sends out the invoice once a month for that. And, but you could do it weekly if you want or however you want. Um, and so, and so it sends out one big fat <laughs> invoice once a month for all those locations. They're all beautifully separated and they don't have to generate those invoices anymore. So they're loving it. Okay. Another thing to get into is when you're doing commercial accounts is, specialized equipment, all right? So this is, you're going to find a niche. You're going to find something that people are bringing stuff in, like especially if you're doing those keywords, so like towels or tablecloths or whatever it happens to be. And and so on the left, and this is all optional, of course. I just want to explain like, hey, this is the stuff that's out there. Um, on the left, you got some Continental OPL machines. And so those automatically inject the right amount of, you know, detergent at the right time and, and and it just helps eliminate mistakes and at the right time in the cycle. So those do a better quality wash. Um, I got the hot water heater. Of course, you already have a hot water heater, but what if you had commercial machines and a, and OPL machines and that hot water heater was just connected to those few machines? Then you could run hotter water than you normally would be able to, and 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 that could really help out get the oils out and things like that. Um, then on the right, you've got the you got the um, uh, iron and commercial iron, you know, that does take training. You got to have the people who could do it. Uh, but if, if there are a lot of laundry owners I've talked to who have the space for that or not, and that's the challenging part is the space for that. But if you do, that is a competitive differentiator. 
and that helps get rid of those themes and it just speeds things up. And that is a great, people are able to just grow their business just from the iron. Um, another thing, and this is relatively new, this is ozone. Um, and so I'm just going to talk a little bit about this. This is on the left, you got Aquawing. On the right, you got Articlean. Those are the two biggest ozone companies in the U.S. And and I recommend if you do go with ozone, go with one of those two companies because they're they're the industry experts. Um, you, you, I've seen on Facebook they'll have a. Well, let, I should explain what ozone is. Ozone is something they add to the water. It's basically the O2 particle, and they split it into an O3. And and it's the same effect as when lightning strikes and it has that smell and it's, people love the smell and it gets rid of bacteria and it sanitizes and it gets rid of that sewer smell. Sometimes if you open up a washing machine and it smells kind of bad from the, sewer, from the lines, it gets rid of all that. Um, and it just does a really good job cleaning and, and, it, and people love the smell. It makes your fabric uh, smoother. It cleans better. It, uses, it works when it's on cold wash, not hot wash. So you could actually not have to use hot water so much. You could actually charge on your extra rinse cycle because this is treating all the water. So when instead of charging an extra 25 cents for extra rinse, you could say this is an ozone cycle. And you could educate your customers about ozone, whether it's commercial clients or residential or pickup and delivery. I would market the heck out of ozone because this stuff works. Um, one of the top laundry owners um, in the country, Art Yeager, he's got the ozone system and and he's just saying and he just says his customers just love it and 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 it creates that stickiness where they're always going to use his laundromat not somebody else's because he's got a differentiator other people don't um so the prices do range on this i, I don't want to give exact price but it's not cheap but the beautiful part is it helps out all of your machines um so you get this and then it's like upgrading every single one of the machines in your laundromat so it might be more cost effective to do this and yeah so there's a combination um i it's something definitely to look into if you want to talk more about it one-on-one -on -one, because there's different distribution systems and I could explain part of the difference or different questions to ask. So if you're looking at it, I recommend calling me and so I could, I'm not an expert at it, but I could at least let you know like what questions to ask, what the differences are. And then that way, when you're talking to them, you could, you're, you're kind of equipped with the right questions to ask. You know, this is a newer technology. It's been around for, for ozone. It's been around for a long time, but just in the last two to five years, it's really taken off for laundromats. Um, and I've seen Facebook threads on this where somebody will mention, hey, what do you think of ozone? And like 20 people say it's the best thing ever. They never open up a laundromat without it. And their customers love it. And it's helped out their business, all the stuff. And then there'll be one or two people who say, I got burned. I installed a system. It didn't work. I, you know, $30,000 out the window. And, and then, and then, um, and it turns out they did it with a no name company or company that, so point is, is, this is serious stuff. Ozone is a gas, and you want to make sure you're working with the experts. Um, but it, this could be a differentiator that could really help grow your business. And um, and that basically wraps up on the commercial side. So if you do have questions, go ahead and uh, ask questions on the right-hand side. You're going to be spending about 10 or minutes or so uh, answering any questions. Um, over here, this is called Continue Your Education. What I recommend is I also have a webinar about how to get started and pick up and delivery and how, which talks about how to get customers and then how to make it easy to place orders. And you could go to curbsidelaundries.com and then you just tap on um, this video gallery button right over here. So that's our website, curbsidelaundries.com. You just tap video gallery, whole bunch of videos, but towards the bottom is the webinar. Um, and, and then also right over here, if you are interested in seeing more about our software, we didn't really show much of the actual screenshots or, you know, a walk through any of that stuff. But the demo is more than just a demo. It's more of like, hey, we're looking at your business and seeing how we could grow it. So it's more, it's really more collaborative. Um, and, and so you could just tap demo if you like. Um, over here, uh, this is the Q&A. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, see what questions we've got. Uh, yeah, so if you do have any other questions I didn't get, wasn't able to get to you or something comes up in the future, simply just call my number. It's right over there, 562-480-8427. Um, you could also call my brother, Aaron Simmons, and that's the number right over there, 562-533-0053. Um, we're here to help. Um, yeah, we love talking to laundry owners. We love talking to laundry, um, and we're happy to sharing information too because our feeling is, the better we all do, like the better we all do together, it's just a wonderful thing. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So that's 
kind of what we're here for. So you don't have to go through all the hard knocks that we went through. Um, but anyways, just want to thank everybody for attending uh, and I yeah, really appreciate it and uh, look forward to talking to you soon.